Welcome to Raz Let's Play Crystalis. A little background on the game before I get started. Uh, the game is from 1990, developed by SNK and published by Nintendo. Uh, there's not a whole lot of exposition for these older games. Uh, there was a remake that was released in 2000, but honestly I like the soundtrack better from the NES version. So I decided just to play through this one. So let's get started. Now this opening video will loop if we don't continue, so let's get to it. We have Condition Green. This is a Wild Arms prequel. Not really, though. Our hero, Purple Guy. So this is the first town, Leaf, and all the characters that you walk up to, you automatically talk to them. Kind of gets really annoying when you need to get around them. So I've played this before, the first thing I've got to do is get some money. It's in the Wise Man Zebu. Then we need to get our first sword. So this game has several equipment slots and four slots each. For the swords and the powers, there are exactly four in the game, but for armor and shield there's more than four, so you may need to sell, sell some from time to time. For items, each row is a different type of item. Uh, the middle two are undroppable items. Magic, obviously, undroppable, and you'll get eight spells throughout the game. So really this first column here and the two armor and shield columns are the only columns you have to worry about inventory management. We have our sword equipped. We have two attacks. We have our ranged shot attack, which in most cases is slightly more powerful than the sword stab. This game is a grinding game. A lot of the bosses have a minimum level at which you can damage them, and if you're below that level you won't be able to do anything except die and start over. You can save in this game, however if you forget then you're kind of stuck when you get to that boss. When I played this as a kid I would use the power attack all the time and in recent years I started to use a stabbing technique I've seen other people do. Oh, I forgot to get the flute. Uh, 
that's okay. The first thing we need to do is talk to the wise man. Power of the atom. If I can make the windmill work, he'll teach me some magic. reasons the game gives you the money in the very beginning is because grinding for money takes a while in this first area and one of the things you need to do very early on is buy an alarm flute. It's the only place you can get the alarm flute and you don't need more than one. You really don't need any shield or armor, though you can buy some for the first part. But I'll just wait until we get to the next town, Brynmer. Or Brynmer. Or Brynmer. Now magic is always the B button. And items are the same button as your sword, so if you have an item equipped you won't be able to attack. I just stabbed him awake. My alarm flute didn't do anything. There's a strange ball hidden in the cave. From that we get to the windmill key. Items are again the sword attack button. I'm going to try to grind as I go along, otherwise you do get stuck in particular parts of the game where you have to grind before you get to the next boss. So I want to try to cut that down to a minimum. Kind of grind as we progress. So I can enjoy the lovely 8-bit soundtrack. Now the enemy is in the cave, you won't be able to damage until you're at least level 2, and you need to be level 3 for the boss. Get the first spell, Refresh, which allows you to heal, which is really useful. It's probably going to be the magic that you use most in the game. Second, probably to Flight. Yeah, you can fly in this game. Kind of. It's a little glitchy, and you're able to still attack certain enemies from the south. You're facing north. Little jelly slimes. Or slugs. You can get poisoned by some enemies in this game, like these uh, pink uh, hat slimes, I call them. Medical herb, an alternative to using refresh, if you have the money. Health and magic do not regenerate without special armor. The ball of wind. Now what these balls do, if you have the correct ball for the sword you have equipped, also equipped, it'll charge up your attack. 
for these attacks can also do special things. We'll cover each as we get the appropriate sword involved. I'm sure there's a joke there somewhere. Antidote. That'll cure your poison. There's one more important item we want to get in this cave. It'll come in handy for the next section. Warp Boots. They allow you to port to any town that you visited before. Save some backtracking. There's not a really whole lot of this in this game. There's uh, some in the uh, second stage and at the end. grind a little bit more in this part because the enemies are much easier to defeat here. So I want to get to level 4. Another medical herb? Definitely don't want to mess around with those slimes because if you get poisoned, you have a limited number of antidotes and they eat into your funds. See, I just got poisoned. So I need an antidote. My body returns to normal. There's a few other status effects in the game. Uh, paralysis, uh, change, where it turns into a monster and you can't perform any of your actions, but you can still move. And a drain is another one. There's also petrify, which effectively works as paralysis. I think that'll be good enough. All the status effects are very, very annoying. First boss is the vampire. It's just generally a nuisance. Fairly easy to beat. Much easier with the stabbing attack than the charged attack. When I had first played this, I would always use the charged attack, but it would take forever and more often than not miss. Now we're in the second section, and the second town. Brynmire, or Brynmar. Akahana, one of the recurring characters in this game, drops something by the river. And I'll pick that right up after I get some armor. Leather armor, nothing else. There's also another guy in here that we'll want to talk to. So these guys are talking about how to get rich quick. And this guy runs off. Never to be seen again. Or will he? Now the item we got for the vampire is the rabbit boots, which allow you to jump. You may want to get used to this sound, because as you walk through things like grass, you're slowed down, slightly. And this mud will actually poison you while you're in it, and slow you down. And that's the reason why you're given the rapid boots in the first place. It's a statue of Onyx, which is what that guy was looking for, Akahana. The reason you have these boots is for this particular mud section, since the next town is over that way. But we need to get something else first. 
These guys are invincible until you get the fire sword. Or it might be a level restriction. But I know that the fire sword works on those guys. Statue of Onyx. I handed in the statue. It says, so I need a gas mask to get to the forest, he says. There's also someone over here that will tell us about the village of Oak deep in the forest. Uh, sometimes there are events in this game where you have to talk to certain people in order to progress. Well, true for a lot of games. Sometimes it's not always clear who you didn't talk to, since a lot of people look the same, and you may have already figured out where you need to go next. So sometimes, if, if you're having trouble progressing, just go through and talk to everyone. There might be a trigger that's causing it to block your path. So we're going to equip the gas mask, or else we'll die pretty quickly in here. So second path up. This is the Village of Oak. Now everybody in here just tells us to go in peace. Buzz off. Even the Bearded Elder. Now the reason we came here first is that there's a trigger for an NPC that is off of the main field but not in the last town that we were in. But, since we have these handy warp boots that we got from the caves from before, we can go back to Bryn Mawr. Rabbit boots on. There's actually this music in the background. Flash Flash Revolution has it on their website. Uh, if it's still operational. It's uh, called uh, House Leaves or House Leaf, but it's this field music. It's pretty fun. Not too difficult. So this is Tornell. He wants us to duel with this guy, Stom. Now this guy is pretty difficult to beat. Each time you lose to him though, it gets a little bit easier. It's a button masher. the ability telepathy which lets us talk with animals and also talk to the wise men without having to go track them down. Now I believe we could have already talked to animals before so that's just an explanation for why after the fact it's basically a retcon. But now that we have finished that the people in Oak will talk to us all of a sudden. It's almost as if Tornell has already passed the message along via telepathy. And then we'll fight the next boss. And possibly call it apart. But the next boss is effectively immune to our attacks until we reach level 4. And so are the enemies in the forest until we get the fire sword. So now I have to grind. 
And now I'm level four, so we need to go back into the woods. Be sure to equip your gas mask. Going to take care of this little problem in the Oak Village. Now this person is looking for their boy, ran into the forest. He's really easy to find. Just go south until you can't go south any longer. Take a right, take another right to be heading south again, and then take another right. Then left, left, and right. I guess the first time that was a left. Okay, thanks, bye. You get the insect flute as a reward, which is not much of a prize when you find out what it does. Now we're going to get our next sword, which is the sword of... Wait for it. Fire. This is definitely one of my favorite swords. Particularly the uh, second level attack is can hit multiple times. I'm going to stop in the inn and heal up real quick. I know this inn is twice the cost of the one in Bryn Mawr. Now the next boss is just your first left and then another left. All the way to the end. It's a very simple layout of this forest. Use the insect flute here, and it will summon an insect, a beetle of some sort, that spits green stuff. Acid, I'm assuming. Yes, acid. Now you cannot use the Sword of Wind against this guy, he's immune to it. And at level 4 you take a lot of damage from everything in this boss fight. Strategy for this boss is just to run across and hit him with a level 1 charge shot. This game would be a lot better with strafing. And he's done! Now we get the Ball of Fire, so now we can really do some damage. So it's a beam attack, pretty much. I'm going to show this off as soon as we get to an enemy that I can reliably hit, like that guy. I'm going to get hit by the Pollinator. So we finished our business here. We don't even need to tell the people of Oak that, hey, the giant insect He's gone. Don't, don't need to report back. However, we do need to talk to somebody else. Go ahead and use one of these metal arms. See, those guys are not immune to fire and they die with one hit. It's actually multiple hits, but it's one shot from this second level sword. And we can now kill the blue enemies as well. Magic power is too low. So, yeah, the rabbit boots conflict with your magic button. So now he's telling us about this tornado bracelet bracelet that'll maximize the Sword of Wind. And it's in Mount Saber. And that seems like a pretty good place to call it a part. I'm just going to stop in Bryn Mawr, buy some more equipment.
the but can't afford the bronze shield. Carpa shield will be fine. Better than nothing. Rest up in the inn for a week 20. Yep. And we'll call it a part right here. Thanks for watching. In the next part, we're going to go to Mount Saber, and there will be a little bit more grinding. See you then.